In this video, we're talking about why this chart at this price is the most important for you to be looking at in the markets right now. We'll also be talking about technical analysis levels for the S&P 500, Tesla, NASDAQ, AMC, gold, Bitcoin, and more. There's so much to cover in this video, and we're really seeing AMC starting to pump now, guys. Stay tuned to find out more. All right, well, as we like to do on this channel, let's take a look at the heat map through the past 24 hours during the Tuesday session. And you'll notice straight away, it was a mixed bag, but there were two sectors that did very well, banks and of course, energy. Value sectors coming back into play here. Energy or US oil had a massive breakout on it late last week, which we've been covering on the channel. And I think things are really looking up there for the next couple of weeks on oil and energy stocks as a whole. Let's take a look at which was the winner in terms of sectors. So we all had a pretty good start to the day. We saw the fake market futures as we've become to call them for the Monday session, in this case, Tuesday session, come in green and then instantly go red. This has not been unusual actually for the market. By the end of the day, we had some recovery. We of course saw the Dow, the S&P 500 all up slightly. And as has become an occurrence recently, a move into hyper stocks and move into the Russell 2000 smaller companies continues to be the rotation here. When we take a look at the sectors, energy easily outperforming everything else, materials, financials, and actually one of our favorite sectors for June, XLV, moving down 1.64%. Did you know that actually during June, XLV usually outperforms all other sectors on the market? We'll be talking about that more in our live stream tonight. Some very interesting information I've got to share with you guys. So make sure you subscribe and of course hit the like button if you enjoy the videos. Let's take a look at this fear index and fear and greed index that's taken from really Twitter feeds. Let's see what everyone is feeling right now. At the moment, we can see that the S&P 500 is moving up. Okay, that's good. However, we kind of want technically the general consensus to still be fairly fearful because we know there's a correlation with greediness on Twitter and declining markets like we saw over here. At this stage, in the middle, so really it's down to price action. This isn't helping us just yet, but we will continue to use this indicator as I think it's a great one for showing us true retail fear and greed in the markets and of course, what Wall Street like to take advantage of. Here we've got the earnings whispers for the week ahead. We've obviously had Zoom earnings now. Now we move towards Splunk and some other big ones, DocuSign, CrowdStrike. There are some really large companies still in earnings and we need to be remembering that if we trade individual stocks, you must know when your earnings are coming out. Earnings Whispers is a good place. We're not sponsored by them. I just think they're good guys. Follow them on Twitter. And also while you're there, follow FX Evolution if you want to. Let's get into the technical analysis and straight away you'll see volatility spiked yesterday. The VIX went up. Now, a lot of people always associate this index or indice with fear. So obviously the VIX spiking up usually means fear is coming back into the market. It can also mean just a little bit of volatility as in movements coming back in. We had that big green session open and 1% still good. Then we saw the sell off occur. Then we saw some recovery. That type of thing always increases the VIX index. And why does it do so? Because we've actually had a very sideways week last week in comparison. We'll take a look at the charts very soon though for the US 100, NASDAQ and S&P, etc. Let's have a look at the dollar index as this often really kind of leads on to risk on or risk off sentiment in the markets. And I would say that we have continued to kind of find this trend line as resistance. This is on the eight hour chart. And we found a very interesting point yesterday. Let's go down to the two hour chart to have a look at this. So you'll notice straight away that we have support, which is here. So this is technical support. We have technical resistance and we have a point where the market's still unsure whether it's going to go up or down. So we don't have enough information yet. Maybe if we get like a smaller lightning bolt here on the one hour chart towards the downside, we'll continue to see selling pressure come in for the dollar index. That will mean risk on. And then I would expect all indices and also gold, silver, etc., to perform. But at the moment, gold dollar index is certainly holding the zone as well as it can. Support, resistance, We'll watch this through the live session tonight. Keep an eye on that one, guys. Gold is, of course, suffering as the dollar index is stabilizing and finding some strength. We have moved down here back around the 1900 zone. When we take a look at gold on the daily, it really doesn't look excellent. I don't think it's broken any downtrends yet and started like any, you know, things that we need to be worried about. But we still have our aims towards the 1930. And at this stage, there's a lot of noise going on here in gold. We need to continue watching the dollar index to lead the way here 
for what this is going to do. But a new low here past this 18 kind of 90 zone again, I don't think that bodes well for the short term of gold in the longer term uptrend that we're seeing. When we go over to silver, you'll see the same thing. Big rejection here yesterday, really nasty candle actually. A big shooting star or some people will call it a pin bar. That's being followed on by some rejection candle here. Notice how we're getting movement round where it's actually continuing on to our bottom of the trend line. It has to buy and it has to buy during this next 24 hours. Hopefully it can do so. And of course, any closure above this 28.54 now will pretty much certainly lead towards 30 from a technical perspective because you're going to take out so many stop losses that are going to be here. There'll be a big amount of shorters here. And obviously it's in everyone's best interest in the big places not to let silver get back up to 30. If they do, it could create a big squeeze that squeeze could then push past 30. And every time it's gone past 30, it's gone close to $50. It's only happened twice in history and it's gotten close to 50, if not hitting 50 during those periods. So it's very detrimental if silver can ever get past there. Guys, next 24 hours, very important. We'll continue to watch it. Let's go over to Bitcoin. Now I've talked about how I think this is very, very tough to trade right now from a technical perspective. Good news is that we did see that resistance on the eight hour time frame, one of the best for Bitcoin hold, and it became support. We've quickly lined up 38,000. We've also got this series of two peaks that have come through. So imagine here, if we go through 38,000, close above this trend line down, are we now putting in the work that gets us to 42? I would say yes. So we close above this trend line, we close above this peak, we create a great sequence here on the eight hour, the trough, the peak, the high trough, etc., and we can move towards this 42 test. Remember, getting through 42, 42 and a half will continue an uptrend. It'll basically put a massive floor in Bitcoin and a lot of the fear, a lot of the FUD, a lot of all those things will go away. We're going to have to keep watching this hour by hour, day by day, because anything can happen on these coins right now. And we're clearly seeing a bit of a changing of the guard as well, where Bitcoin's stabilizing or finding some weakness. Ethereum is actually showing further strength. ADA Cardano is showing even more strength. So we don't necessarily have BTC leading the charge, though if BTC crashes and falls back down to the 34K, that's going to be important. Daily shorters, where do you want to be? You want to be watching this zone very closely. We said 34K, see how 34 and a half, there is no daily close underneath this point. So watch that very, very carefully for anyone that's out there trading Bitcoin. I also would think weekly is super important as well. If the fear gets back hold of this market and it goes under this zone, boy, oh boy, could we be looking at some serious lows coming in. At least a retest back to the 30, I would think, if we close under this, this area. It's very critical that it does not do so. So let's take a look at AMC here and straight away, you can see that we trapped it up yesterday between its breaks. It opened higher, found some weakness throughout the first part of the session. We were hoping around 28 would be the return level. It got to about 28.50 here, bounced, came back retest, bounced again. For anyone that doesn't know, this little candle here is often a go sign for day traders because you've got basically a double bottom level right around the area of where you expect it to bounce. So there's the little buy zone. It moves up here. And then, of course, it moves down. Now, after hours, this thing went ballistic. I don't know if it can hold it in the pre-session. It was sitting around 37, I believe, plus. So hopefully, you guys in the AMC, you're holding strong if you are, or you're take, starting to have a plan of where you want to take it. And just remember, every $5, guys, 40 bucks, 45 50 going to be incredibly important zones. And as we know with apes, they often go to around those numbers and then there is some shorting as people take profit. So be careful there. Let's move on over to Tesla. I don't think there's much to note here today and we've got so much to cover that I'll just stick to the general plan, which is to take it to the devil number, 666. We're still seeing an uptrend here. Neo went out massive yesterday. That was a huge move. Got about 9% done on it. Uh, we've actually been more bullish on the Neo price action. Uh, we don't cover it too much, but when we did see that trend line get broken through, we knew that there was repair going on and it's been a bit of a sleeper hit recently. I think 42 plus right now, which is excellent for Neo fans. So hopefully this can happen on Tesla. You'll notice that we have the 20 exponential and 50 exponential sitting behind and this is all leading to hopefully some nice movements up to the 666 where we expect some selling to incur on Tesla. Still looking good guys, nothing wrong with that chart. Let's move over to the US 100. Now we said this is the most important chart to be looking at. 
I'd be looking at it on a four hour time frame. Why? Because we have a low, we have a high, but we have no closures. Now we mentioned this in the weekend video. I'm more of a fan of waiting for the higher time frames to close out. We actually got a shorter time frame closing out above the high here. That was a false break. That's why if we ever see a false break before, we pay attention to that and then we try to wait for the confirmation next time unless we're scalping and doing some other stuff. Then you've got to be more nimble and obviously it's a numbers game at that point. So we continue to be in a very nice channel here. Hopefully the NASDAQ can hold these lows, move back up to the 1750 and we're still looking for a closure above the 1750 on the daily or the four hour or below. And if it does move below, you know, we've got to recognize that we've got to realize that the next stop is most likely going to be 13,400 for the NASDAQ. So we've got great consolidation. We have a great level and we'll continue to pay attention to this chart because it's super important when we look at it. Have a look at the NASDAQ. You'll see the consolidation, the zone we're looking at. Again, the daily, really important to look at. Double bottom still in play here on this pair. So we just keep watching it throughout the sessions. S&P 500, when we move over to that, the weekly here, we're still just going to bring a big emphasis on the fact that we had those two big rejection wicks. We've had the weekly close, which was good last week. Bit of a Tuesday session kind of falter. But at this stage of this recording, we're flat as attack on the futures. We go down to something like the four hour. You'll notice really not much is happening. We still have strong support around the 4180. We still have some resistance here near these all-time highs. And uh, yeah, I would just really be watching and waiting. As I always say to some people, not every day is a great trade day. Yesterday was good on certain stocks, but it certainly wasn't amazing on the indices. We saw the futures have too much bullishness in them. And we took a poll as a community and we'll be showing that tonight just to see how these Mondays, these Tuesday sessions, in this case, because of Memorial Day, really work out. They're not often as good as you think. So yeah, we've got some movement up here. Nothing looks bad. Nothing looks bearish yet, but we will continue to watch it because we know that NASDAQ is probably going to give us the key. Let's move over here to US oil. Big closure out on the previous day. That is beautiful stuff. Check that out. Wow all the way to 68.81. Now, we still have our aim. Our aim is still going to be 75.76 here on oil. Could it come back first, retest from the top down? Absolutely, we have resistance, 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 multiple touches, beautiful movement here, and hopefully oil can continue to the promised land. Why do we have 75? Some new viewers may ask. The reason why, previous peaks. And I believe that already we're starting to see those articles come out where they're like $100, guys, oil's going to $100. You know that oil might have this little bit in it, but when it hits these peaks, you have to put this in massive perspective. Remember, this is oil over all of time. When we think about where oil could go to, could it go back here? Okay, yeah, sure, it could. But will it have big problems at its 18 highs? Absolutely, I do believe it will. So that's around that 75, 76 level. Be very careful when we're talking about V-shaped recovery in oil. And of course, we still have many concerns here with oil over the next couple of years. Now, I know there's a lot of fans on the channel of this and black gold seems to be back in focus at this stage. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll just leave you with this. I think it's just way too funny. We do share a bit of our thoughts on Twitter. Come follow us, FX Evolution on Twitter. Make sure you join up. We've already got another 700 followers or 800 followers in the week we've been talking about it. So that's awesome. Thanks so much, everybody. And we'll see you in another video, either live streaming tonight, one and a half hours before market open, or of course, tomorrow in our daily recap. Bye for now.